Welcome back to the channel, Berserk fans. It's your boy, Kaiser Goose Levin. Happy New Year. Happy 2021. Chapter 363 is finally upon our hands. So it's about time that media starts, you know, being consistent. Let's hope so. We're going to be going over doing an overview, doing a review of Chapter 363, going on from where Chapter 362 left off. So without further ado, let's get into why I clicked on this video. Yo, yo. Jumping off the chapter, we see Guts and the crew pretty much leaving the Dwarven district and pretty much coming back up to the upper levels of Elfhelm. Among their walk, you see Guts kind of reflecting and thinking about what he just saw. He's making the distinction that what he saw that happened to the Skull Knight is pretty much similar to what happened to him, being that the both of them are survivors of the Eclipse and how there was a God Hand over there and Void was there and the people that they loved died and the branding, so on and so forth. So they get to a certain part where they get to a mausoleum. The leader of the elves comes out enamored with the Skull Knight and the Skull Knight in return. From how Sherke and Guts are looking, they're saying, oh my god, she looks just like the person in that vision that the Skull Knight was enamored with. I guess we're making the distinction that she is the person who died in that vision in his arms. The gravesite is hers. I'm guessing that her spirit or whoever she was resurrected into the leader of the elves. Maybe that's why Gifrin acknowledges him as the king because maybe they too were the rulers of this area. Proceeding on to the next panel in the next area, we see the rest of the crew pretty much just walk away from the scene and let the Skull Knight and the Lady Priestess pretty much have their intimate moment. And while this is going on, Sherke pretty much takes the time to actually ask Gedfrin what's the connection between her master Flora and the Skull Knight. So Gedfrin pretty much uh, takes the time to give some backstory on who Flora was and what she meant to them. So she pretty much explains to everybody how Flora used to be part of Elfhelm. She used to serve the Lady Priestess. Making that distinction, she was very fond of the relationship between the Skull Knight and the Lady Priestess. Because of that history, there was some kind of taboo that she committed that pretty much got her exiled from the land. Before he can continue and explain more, Evalira comes out of nowhere and grabs Shirke because Isidro is causing a lot of mayhem and for her to come right away. So she gets pulled off and dragged off pretty much couldn't get the rest of the story from Gedfrin and Morda decides to follow Shirke because you know of course this is like her little sister she's gonna follow her so when they get to, to the forest Ishijo is, is pretty much messing with the girls doing a lot of mayhem he has a lot of time in his hands so he's pretty much messing with them and pulling their skirts up and wrapping it around their faces pretty much how he does with Shirke so from here on, we see how uh, Ishijo is pretty much kind of like using this as a form of payback for all the times that Shirke has pretty much been like getting at him and turning him into a monkey. Uh, Ishijo is having a lot of fun. He's jumping up in the trees. He's like being mad agile and he's using all the little elves who look like Puck and pretty much throw them at the girls. But when Morda comes around, you can see Ishijo pretty much kind of like enamored with her because, you know, of course, she's a fully developed woman. So, you know, little boys, they're, they're curious. All of Puck and his his uh, relatives pretty much say he sees the boobs, so he's catching feelings. So from there, Shirke pretty much sees an opening, kind of like strike him and like make him to stop. But Ishijo has learned he dodged it. Not today. You ain't gonna do this to me. It's about to have his, you know, his payback. In the moment he's about to strike, a weird ass freaking Kelpie just grabs him out of nowhere, gobbles him up. Isma comes out of nowhere and she befriended this Kelpie and this Kelpie just pretty much just decided to try and eat Ishidro. She tells the Kelpie to pretty much spit him back out and like all the girls have their revenge on him. After that fun little scene with the interaction between the little kids, we go back to Gedfrin and Guts pretty much just walking and talking. And Gedfrin pretty much says to Guts, hey man, I see that, you know, the Skull Knight has taken a liking to you. And Guts proceeds to let him know, there's nothing going on between us. Like, you know, I, I just owe him. He saved my life. Gedfrin proceeds to say, you know, hey, I think he's taken a liking to you because you remind him of himself and when he was alive. And Gedfrin pretty much says, I don't think he wants you to go through the same fire that he went through that took his, his former self. Pretty much tells him the fury that you feel, it can go two ways. It can help keep you alive or it can consume you. And you can see that Guts takes a reflection of this. They walk by a house where Casca is being kept with Farnese. It pretty much hits him hard. Of course, Guts does what he does best, you know. He starts reflecting and swinging his sword and practicing. And his mind does a quick flash of Griffith come out of nowhere. And he's like, oh, this guy again, what the hell? 
And then within that flash, we see the moonlight child just come out of nowhere. But something interesting happens here. Usually Guts is very weary of strangers, but Guts puts his sword away and invites the kid over. I'm starting to wonder if Guts actually understands who this kid is. And that's the end of the chapter. I thoroughly enjoyed chapter 363 more than I did 362. Even though chapter 362 and 361 gave more insight and more answers, I kind of feel like chapter 363 pretty much connected a lot of dots, gave a little break from all the intensity that is going to come in in the future. It's starting to shape up to see like things are coming together and we're going to move on from Elfhelm. I don't know. Usually the Moon Child comes to Casca, and Casca is the more accepting of the two. Now that Guts has grown a little bit more, he's matured a bit more from what he was about two years ago, he's going to be interacting with this Moon Child to be more intuitive instead of more reactionary. Because now the Moonlight Child has come straight forward to Guts, and he recognizes the kid. This is very interesting. I, I, I like where things are going here. What did you guys think of Chapter 363? What do you guys think is gonna be for 364 or for the future of the series? I personally think that from here, 364, we're probably gonna get that interaction between Guts and the Moonchild. I think we're gonna leave Elfhelm for a bit and go probably go see what Rekert is doing. Leave your thoughts down below. I'd love to see what you guys think and what you guys presume is gonna happen. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and tune in and by clicking the bell so that you get more Berserk videos and more topics that we're gonna go over. And as always, you know the vibes. It's Kaiser Coos 11. Appreciate you.